here in the MEAC for a Monday showdown between North Carolina Central and Florida A&M. And now that the calendar has turned to February, we take a look at the standings. We see that only one team remains unbeaten in conference play, and that's Norfolk State, but both the Rattlers and the Eagles are well within striking distance, and so a game like tonight is ever so important. Hey, welcome everybody to Tallahassee, Florida. Doug Sherman along with John Thompson III. So glad you could be here tonight for this ball game. And as mentioned, Coach, when you've only got eight games left in the regular season, everyone counts. They do. And these teams come in with a little different perspective. Central and Coach Moten are used to being here, having won the, the last two cha uh, MEAC championships. Now, Florida A&M and Coach McCullum, they're in uncharted waters. They're not used to being in the hunt this late in the season. They come in with a four-game winning streak. Well, NC Central has perhaps the best big man in the league in Rashawn Davis. He's going to be a handful tonight. No, he is the best big man in the league. He's a pro prospect, very efficient player, plays extremely hard. He's number one in the conference at field goal percentage at 66.2, number eight in the country with field goal percentage. Meanwhile, the leading offensive option for Florida A&M is a southpaw in the backcourt. His name is Justin Rabinow. You know, and, and, and Central's going to have to find a way to slow him down and, and hope that he doesn't get any help from his partners. Rabinow is a dead-eye shooter. You can't leave him open. He's shooting 45% from three. He, he, they, they do a great job of getting him shot. They're an unselfish team to find a way to get him the basketball. We are inside the Lawson Center, the home of the Rattlers. And as you see, they're wearing their orange uniforms here at home with white lettering and green trim. And in the backcourt, along with Justin Ravenel, who's a senior from Lithonia, Georgia, they've got Cameron Reeves at the point. And Coach McCullum has talked about the fact that they can be offensively challenged as a team, and they need both Ravenel and Reeves to score from the backcourt. No, they do. And, and what they've done is their defense has compensated for their, I don't want to say lack of offense, but for their offensively challenged, to use coaches' terms. And so as long as they're defending, they should be okay. But as I said, open, Ravenel needs some help. He needs someone to get in there and help him score points, or the burden is going to be too much for him. The Eagles wearing road black uniforms with the maroon lettering and white trim and we're underway with the Rattlers riding a four game winning streak with the basketball first. Tracy Hector Jr. Jr. from Jonesboro, Georgia turns it over. The turnovers are going to be key. They're always key. But both of these teams have a tendency to get a little out of control sometimes. They, whichever team protects the ball the most today will win. We have a problem with the clock, which is stuck at uh, 19 minutes, 53 seconds. The shot clock was still at 30. They've taken four seconds off, figured it out quickly, and we're back in action. Larry McKnight, Jr., Randy Miller, Jr., Jordan Perkins, Rashawn Davis, and Zachary Douglas, the five starters for North Carolina Central. The big fella. I talked about his field goal percentage, and he comes out and misses a dunk to start the game. But that's still a good sign for Central. You see... If they get the ball to him in the paint, if they get the ball to him deep, he's not going to miss too many. Looks like we're having another clock issue. Yeah, some of the numbers, Coach, for Rashawn Davis, the, the fifth-year senior from Chicago, a transfer from Kent State, are ridiculous. He had a four-game stretch earlier this year in late December, early January, where he was a unthinkable 35 of 38 from the floor. He shot 92% in a four-game stretch. And, and that's just gaudy. I mean, those, that's, a, that's, that's gaudy numbers, especially in light of the fact they all aren't like the previous shot that he missed. It's not like he's just getting dump offs and putbacks. He's making basketball moves, basketball shots over people. Great touch, and they do a great job. They, they know. They know, hey, big fella, your name is, your, your picture's on all the posters around campus. You know, we're coming to you. His teammates know they're coming to him, and he's responding. Now, Davis spent two years at Kent State, appeared in 46 games, made three starts. But then uh, the young man from Chicago was looking for something different. He's had a wonderful two-year run with the Eagles in Durham, North Carolina. Made second-team all-conference last year when he was third in the country in field goal percentage at 67%. He's continued it this year and looking very much, as you said, as the best big and certainly a 
first team all conference and a possibility for me at player of the year. And, and that will come down to how they finish out, you know, who, probably who gets player of the year. You know, but just from talking to friends that are in the professional ranks, you know, he's definitely someone that the pros have their eye on. The scouts have been coming to games, and he's going to get a chance. Now, that's next year. Let's see what he can do coming down, as you said in the open, this last eight games here. They're in a position. They're, they're in position. And he's going to have, if they make a move on Norfolk State, a lot of it's going to be based on how he plays. So Davis and the Eagles come in with a record of 5-3 and three in conference play. Florida a m is 6-2. That's their best start to conference play since way back in 1990. And it looks like the officials have it worked out once again. We'll see if the clock runs smoothly from here on in. 1933 remaining in the first half. 22 seconds now on the shot clock. This is Cameron Reeves, the sophomore from Champaign, Illinois, who is playing for his grandfather. Robert McCullum, the head coach of the Rattlers, is indeed the grandfather of the point guard. And I, I've never, I've never heard of that scenario. Not to say it's never happened, but you, know, you hear often of guys playing for their father, father-son combinations. This is the first grandfather grandson combination that I've heard of. Me too. I think there are 11 current father-sons in Division I. And I've never heard of a grandfather-grandson before either. You chose not to play for your dad, but you have a brother who did play for your dad at Georgetown, right? Absolutely. I went to Princeton, played for Coach Carrell. Ronnie stayed home, played with Pops at Georgetown. Did Pops want you? Did he offer? You know... I started to say he didn't want paying enough. <laughs> <laughs> Pace and tempo, what are you expecting both ways tonight, Coach? Well, both, both teams are defensive-oriented. Uh, Coach McCollum already told you that his, his family team is offensively challenged. And so I expect them, to, meaning I'll talk about FAMU first, to, to take their time. You know, they, they run good sets. They have a lot of counters. They, they set you up for one thing and then go to the, 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 the opposite. I don't, I don't expect – they'll opportunity run. They'll push when they have it. But I expect them to be very diligent and execute down this end. The Frenzy Central, they are uh, among the best in the conference, if not the best at this end of the floor. Foul called on the baseline with nine seconds on the shot clock. That goes against Larry McKnight, Jr., but uh, Eagles head coach Lavelle Moten has his team first in the MEAC in defensive points per game allowed, first in rebound margin, first in scoring margin, and on the other side, first also in assists per game. I was going to say, the first couple of stats you rattled, you rattled off were defensive-oriented, and they're pretty good down that other end also. First bucket of the night comes from D.J. Jones, the redshirt sophomore two-lane transfer. After turning the corner, a strong finish by Randy Miller, Jr. You know, a lot of Central's offense is, is read, read and react. You know, they run some sets to start the play, but then the players have to, have a, they have to be basketball players. They're not robots out there. And that's why they've had a lot of success lately. These coaches put them in positions where, okay, you have to read what's going on, make a decision on how you're being played, how your teammate is being played, and that will dictate what you do. And I think, Coach, that was a real good sign for Randy Miller, Jr., that his first shot attempt was a layup. He's a terrific shooter among the league leaders in three-point shooting, and he has had some prolific nights. But he's been struggling with his shot lately, and you got to figure start a game, go into the basket can only help with the jump shot later. And that's been coaching. Co Co Coach Moten understands that he wants to get him some easy baskets early. Here they get him trying to go downhill again. You know, get him some baskets early. Then all of a sudden that jump shot's going to go in. Four to shoot. Tough shot again for Miller, and it's a shot clock violation. There's the FAMU defense. And there is Grandpa Robert McCullum with his grandson right in front of him with the basketball, number two. And then the return pass from Tra uh, Tracy Hector Jr. is out of bounds. Now, now he is coaching his grandson. But I don't know whether Coach wants us call. I'm going to let you just call him Grandpa. I'm, I think, I'm, I'm staying away from that. I'm going to do it. You know why? Because I think saying Grandpa is about as respectful a title as you can give to somebody. 
I, I will not argue that. So I'm going to keep going with that until he comes over and tells me otherwise. Miller kicks to the corner. Good look for the Eagles. Bucket by Zakari Douglas, senior from Landover, Maryland. You know, as Zakari watched the practice yesterday, he's making that shot left and right. You got to get out, you have to guard him. Very good penetration right there by Miller. Gets in there, a little too much help. That he's, He can make that shot all day. Turns, lets his boys know on the bench. I told you I got that one. Mm -hmm. Two point bucket, it's a 4 2 North Carolina Central lead early on. They find Davis on the post who goes to work against Isaiah Martin. Unable to finish. Martin picks up the foul on the putback attempt by Rashawn Davis. Now you see it's taken almost four minutes for North Carolina Central to try to get Davis involved. But you see on the catch, he, he had not just two, but three guys around him. You know, so uh, you know, look for FAMU to, to double team him, to, to, to mix it up. I don't think it's going to be a, a continuous diet of doubling, but they're going to make the catch hard. And then once he gets it, they want they want him to get the ball out of his hands. One thing Coach Moten told us earlier today about Davis, says he must realize and want to be the best player on the floor. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one thing for me to sit here and say he's the best big in the MEAC is one thing for Coach Moten mm -hmm. to say, hey, you're the man. You have to show it out here day in, day out. This this, this little three-quarter press, three-quarter court press by NC Central is really bothering AM so far. Ravenel gets the roll. Preseason third team all MEAC. Draws the Rattlers back within a pair. Off the bounce. Perkins, a little strong. Davis keeps it alive. Another point blank miss for NC Central. Fight for the basketball, and the foul comes as Davis, rather Douglas, hit the deck. Our first media timeout of the night has NC Central on top of Florida AM 6 to 4. Now, we own a cupcake shop. I love this new Surface Pro. It's light, it's sleek, it's fast. Cupcakes are a great business. As long as you don't eat the profits. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Do the Dew. Those gentlemen you saw and are seeing are the three Florida a and Rattlers have gone on to play in the NBA. Metalark Lemon actually did not come from FAMU despite Urban Legend. There is rumor around, and it's even on the internet, and then Coach Thompson, you know the internet's never wrong, that says he played here at FAMU, but that gentleman, Tommy Mitchell, who played here at FAMU, he's a uh, Hall of Famer who played for the Harlem Globetrotters and was a teammate of Metalark Lemon with the Globetrotters. He definitively told me a couple of hours ago that no, Metal Arc Lemon did not play for the Rattlers back in the day. And if Mr. Mitchell says it, then that's what it is. I'm going with it. But I, I guarantee you Metal Arc played on campus in the gym. And, and you know how things have legs mm -hmm. and, 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 and urban legend grows. So he, he probably used to come around and play all the time. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, hey, you know, Metal Arc went to Florida A&M. When indeed he actually did not, but uh, that's not to take away anything from the other three gentlemen we showed you. They were Bob Williams, class of 1955, who turned out to be the first black player to suit up for the Lakers. Now, they were back in Minneapolis at the time, not, of course, out in Los Angeles, but Bob Miller played in the league. Throw down by Isaiah Martin. And then the others were uh, Clem Johnson, Class of 78 out of FAMU. He spent a decade in the league. I remember him fondly with the 76ers. And then Jerome James, the most recent uh, FAMU product, who was the second round pick of the Sacramento Kings in 1998. Went by the nickname of Big Snack. 7'1, 300 pounds. He spent nine years in the league. I, you know, I love that nickname, Big Snacks. <laughs> the big fella, Mr. Mr. Davis. Looks like he's ready to eat today. They're doing a great job. They run this little weave out, out front, and I'm talking about NC Central. And, and they're getting downhill every time. 
know, the guards need to figure out whether they should, the defensive guards, FAMU, you, should they go under that screen out top and meet the guy on the other side because they're trailing every time and, and, the, and the NC Central perimeter players are getting an advantage coming downhill every time, which causes their big to have to come over to help, which leaves no one to box out this young man right here, Mr. Davis or Zachary Douglas. And Davis is a legit 6'9", 240. Played his high school ball at Paulding County in uh, Georgia, even though he is a Chicago kid through and through. Pressure handled better that time by the Rattlers. Five minutes in, Eagles with a four-point lead. We see two possessions ago. Florida A&M got a got a, a layup off the press, off the pressure, but but it's it's been very effective for Central. With one on the shot clock, the runner by Ravenel caught the rim and he gets the ball back, though lost it out of bounds. And, and that, that shot at the end of the shot clock by Ravenel with one second on the shot clock is because of the press. They didn't get into their offensive set until 15 seconds left, left on the shot clock and weren't able to manufacture a, a decent attempt. Grabbing up, catch and shoot from the head of the key. If you're guarding him, you have to stay locked in on him. You have to help a little less. Your teammates have to cover for you in help positions, but you can't, he can't have that much space coming off that little pin down at the top of the key. Coach McCullough said that it really all started to come together for Ravenel around the time conference play began a year ago. The follow slam by Rashawn Davis. You have to go meet that young man. He's coming. He's coming for boards. Ravenel from the corner this time. Going around the world with his three-point shooting. This is a young man who has a chance to become the all-time three-point king in program history. Number 55 is John Guerra. He finds the open man in the corner of the Perkins. Misfires. Reeves uses the screen beautifully. It's early, but Coach McCullough has to feel good. A team that hasn't made too many shots lately are, are banging shots left and right today. And the takeaway. Hector. And it poked away. It'll stay at this end. We said he's going to have to get some help from somewhere else. I tell you what, you better guard this young man, you get lock and trail, be there on the catch. You give him the prolific score, outstanding shooter, Mr. Ravenel, just getting warmed up. Well, he came into this game 24 shy of the all-time FAMU three-point record that's held by Terrence Woods. And that record has stood since 2004, but with the number of games remaining, Coach, he's got a average making about three per game which is just about his season average so he's got a chance well i'm gonna go out on a limb and say he's gonna make more than three today we got two in the, we have two in the bag already odds are very good <laughs> this is mj randolph into the game he with the blonde hair he's one of the better freshmen in the MEAC. gets a paint touch leaves reeves wide open and once again good shooting from the perimeter for famu you talked about Randolph. He's giving him a big bump. One of the better freshmen in, in, in the conference. He comes off the bench and really gives him a boost. You see, nice penetration right there. A little too much help. Smart kick to Reeves. Great screen and roll to get the big man. And easy to Davis throwing it down. Just keep go back to him. Well, that snapped an 11-2 run for the Rattlers. Long three reads. Didn't catch iron, so the shot clock continues to run. Reeves draws the contact. Rattlers are playing well at this end. 
Still having trouble at the other end containing Davis. He slips out of that screen early. Where's the help? The weak side's got to be there much earlier to bump him, force him to throw the skip. You're going to see Central come right back to that type of action. And it was Ravenel who was supposed to be the help defender who got there late, but uh, realistically at 185 pounds, maybe 6'1". How much could he have done to stop that roll? A lot if he wants to win. You know, he has to get in there, put his body in there. A lot. What's to say it's not about the fight with the dog, size, size of the dog, the, yep. the dog. You the know fight I mean. the dog. There you go. Yeah, I got you. Long, long story short, get your behind in there. <laughs> get your you behind in there. Stand him up, force him to throw the skip. They know they can't give Davis that roll to the rim. That's the number one option that they must take away. Not the size of the dog in the fight, the size of the fight the dog. There you go. There you go. Well, Reeves takes a seat. Gets a word of advice and encouragement from his grandfather. Pat on the back. Turnover forced by that freshman, M.J. Randall. Four times already this year, he's been named the MEAC Rookie of the Week. You know, he's good. He's strong. He's tough. He's a defender. He gives them a different level of athleticism and length when he comes in the game. He competes. He's a freshman, but he really understands how to compete at this level. There he goes, working on Guerra. Front rimmed it. Ball comes to Martin, and he gets the roll. Nice little opportunity basket right there by Martin. Both teams are having trouble with this three-quarter press. Lob to the rim. Looked like the pass was there. Davis just couldn't catch it and finish. He didn't throw it high enough. It actually hit the rim before Davis could catch it. This is Richard Anderson. That's a former Oklahoma Sooner who has transferred here to the Tallahassee School. Tough shot. You got what you thought was going to happen, Coach. That's three main threes already by Ravenel. That's three. And then right there, Davis. If Davis's man is going to set that screen, he's got to step. He can't drop too much. Even if they're in drop coverage, he was too low in that lane right there. And the guy guard Ravenel, you can't run into the screen. You got to get over that. That foul goes against Randolph as Julian Walters hit the deck hard. Coach, how are you going to stop this? You got to fight over it. Big fella's got to step up. If not, he's got three now. He may end up with seven or eight before the game's over. Introducing a rewards program made to keep modern life moving. During this timeout, the uh, officials continue to look at the clock that it uh, froze at 13.33. And so they're going to have to use the stopwatch and figure out exactly how much time needs to come off. As we look up there now, Coach, it says 11-17. All right, so this started off with the very first possession of the game. We're having clock issues. The good thing is the officials are going to take their time. They're going to get it right. In the meantime, we've got entertainment. First of all, the band is fantastic, as it always is at FAMU. And the student body is as engaged and having as much fun as you could hope for. Hey, baby, when you, when you come to FAMU, you know you're going to be entertained by the 100, the marching 100, the band, and most of the time, the crowd also. All right, so they got the clock changed and corrected to 10.50. I had a couple of coaches come up and tell me this afternoon, truly, not just the players are pumped to have national television tonight, but the uh, student body and the fan base as well. This is one of our four consecutive Mondays in the MEAC, and we're so glad to be here. And John and I will be back here next Monday as well for another Rattler game. Yeah, we'll be back for the party next week. <laughs> the officials are letting us know the clock. At the free throw up. line, Julian... Walters, a redshirt senior from Madison, Wisconsin. Played his high school ball at Mount Zion Prep. He's another one of the transfers that Coach Moten has taken in. He had a couple of stops. First at East Tennessee State in the SOCON, then Alabama A&M of the SWAC. 
And now playing his fifth and final year of eligibility for NC Central in Durham, North Carolina. Now Ravenel is on the bench. And let's see where they turn to for buckets now. This is the freshman Randolph. Corner three. Bryce Moraine, no. Long rebound and a foul as Nasir Kaur took one across the chops. You know, early early on, you talked about NC Central's prowess on the boards. They're, they're giving up too many offensive rebounds to FAMU. They, they, they are, they're missing, then they're getting a second and third attempts. They need, to, they need to clean that up. It'll be also interesting to see how long Coach McCullum keeps driving out on the bench. He's, he's not tired, Coach. Get him back in there. The young fella's hot. He's one of those guys who was talking in the build-up to this game. And he was saying it's all business. This is me act time. But don't think for a second these young men don't want to put on a good performance on national television. Nice and patient. Going to go inside. Anderson's pass knocked away and secured by Douglas. Walters finds the open man in the corner. And a foul on the rebound. That'll go against the Eagles. That goes against Jabri Blunt. Richard Jr. from Pittsburgh. And if the name Blunt and Pittsburgh mean anything to you, you're not going to be surprised who his father is. Pro Football Hall of Famer, former Steeler, Mel Blunt. And, and he has a brother... Akil, that's on the football team here at FAMU, mm -hmm. and another brother that's playing back at Central. So Jabri is the uh, the black sheep of the family. He's the one who played basketball instead of football, it sounds like. That's right. The black sheep, maybe the smart one. <laughs> and you got your answer, John. Ravenel's back on the floor. He's being guarded closely, some 25 feet from the bucket. This is Reggie Gardner, Jr., trying to keep him from getting into the lane. Reeves off the dribble, no. Walters with his head up. Douglas steps into a three, can't get the roll. On the fly, here's Randolph. Smart decision, young man. I'll tell you what, that young man makes things happen. Yes, he does. He, consistently this year, he's given them a spark off the bench. Initially, he made a very wise decision not to press it in transition. They work it around, takes his time, pivots, gets a chance for the old-fashioned three. I like his length. He's every bit of 6'4", handles it well. Now he's got a chance to finish a three-point play. At this point... N not a great shooter. Goes to the basket hard. They will post him up also. But he, he, he's a defender. I mean, he, he adds a lot to this team when they bring him in off the bench. Good look for three. And the jump shot is pure by Blunt. And that was a very good read right there by Walters. He came off a naked ball screen on one side. He had the option to hit the roller or hit the swing it opposite if there was too much help on ball side. Very good read. Now, he's been burned a little bit. I'm talking about Walters now down this defensive end. He needs to tighten up his defense. Ravenel denied on his drive to the rim. Here come the Eagles the other way. A little give and take, and it's Gardner with the layout. You know, and that was a very good block down the other end by Douglas. You know, personally, I want to see him do more of those things. He's an outstanding player. Sometimes he likes to float around on the perimeter too much, but he needs to get in there and do some of the, 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 the big man things, the grimy things, the dirty things. Don't leave everything up to Davis. Three on the shot clock. Randolph forced to put it up. 
Ball bounces around, and it comes to Ravenel. And that's what I'm talking about. Right there, Douglas has to secure that rebound. He let Martin jump over his back and push him under. And what happens? Once again, A&M gets a rebound. Ravenel bangs another three. That's his fourth really for the game. And once again, there's MJ Randolph making things happen, forcing another turnover. Off the rebound, nice extra pass. Mr. Ravenel, fourth of the half. I think my, my, my wager's pretty secure right now. <laughs>
And a guy named Kamaji who knows this town here at Tallahassee real well. Just a few miles away at Florida State. You, you see Coach Moten has, has extended the pressure. He started off with a three-quarter court pressure. Now that they've fallen down a little bit, you see he's, he's extended that. And it's a little more aggressive than, it's, than he started off the game with. And it's caused a few turnovers right here. Now you see, we'll see how long it'll take Florida A&M just to calm down, get used to it, make their adjustments. Coach Moten's really done a marvelous job with that Eagles program in Durham. This is his 10th uh, year as head coach at his alma mater. He's one of the all-time great players in program history, so you know he's fully invested. Yeah, I, I think what you just said was an understatement. I mean, Coach Moten has won three conference championships, three of the last five, two in a row. He, he's one of the better coaches in the country, and, and I mean that sincerely. You know, because of the lack of exposure, people don't know about it. But if you look at how he's built this program and sustained this program, it's, uh, it's, it's without a doubt that he's one of the better coaches in the country. That's a charge against Jordan Perkins. You know, they've, they've had a lot of success on penetrating and kicking out to the corner. That was open again right there on Perkins penetration. If he'd come to a jump stop, the person that was in the corner was wide open. I believe it was Douglas that was open in the corner right there. But instead of trying to go all the way, plant, kick to the corner, and they've hit two or three of those shots already. Right. And, and for the most part this season, John, Perkins has done a good job of that. He's among the league leaders in assist to turnover ratio and an assist. But uh, on that occasion, he picks up the turnover off a poor decision. Randolph being hounded by Fennell. And the foul is going to go against Rashawn Davis. Well, in the preseason coaches poll, in the MEAC, they said Bethune-Cookman was the team to beat. That's not played out as such just yet. North Carolina Central was pick number two. Florida A&M was uh, number seven. But uh, last year, Coach McCollum in his first year as head coach of the Rattlers, had them outkick their coverage, if you will. They were picked to finish last and finish middle of the pack, and so they were picked middle of the pack this year, and they're counting on, well, finishing better than expectations once again this year. Well, Coach McCollum knows what he's doing, and it takes time. He has a plan for this program, not just for this team, for this program. And as you said, you see how they outperformed expectations last year. So far this year, they're doing the same thing. The strong recruiting class class is, you know, the young man on defense right now, we've already talked about him, one of the best freshmen in the conference. So things are looking good for this program. Iffy with the rebound. Yeah, Iffy, that's what I'm talking about. Use that big body, go in there. Physically, he can match up with Davis better than anyone that they had. There he is there on go, the Iffy, offensive that. glass. Ravenel tried to go behind the back and lost it. Leads to a run out. Ravenel got a piece of the shot. They say it was a clean block. Great hustle by Ravenel. He got the ball stripped from, from him, didn't pout, hustled, got back into play. Excellent defensive play. A lot of contact. Whistle comes on the drive by Miller. Miller got a little lucky right there. Same thing. He's penetrating into a crowd. I think Central has to find a way to get Davis the ball. And that doesn't mean he has to shoot, but he's not. he has to get the ball on the block. If he gets it, he's going to draw a crowd, and everyone else will be that much more open. How about the stat line he put up January 14th at Delaware State, Coach? Ready? I'm ready. 25 points on 12 for 12 shooting. That's pretty good. Uh, you, you don't end up number eight in the country in field goal percentage by missing a lot. He's efficient. He's an efficient player. Randy Miller Jr. has done a terrific job since transferring in from Mount St. Mary's. He played his freshman year at the Mount, appeared in only 11 games as a freshman for then head coach Damian Christian. And played last year at Moberly uh, Area Community College. 
And you know what? He came in and supplanted an all-conference starting two guard and Reggie Gardner and Lavelle Moten has always said, you know, everybody's going to get an opportunity, whether you're a walk-on or returning conference player, if you outperform the guy ahead of you, you're going to start in front of you. And that's how it should be. Oh, iffy. Violation. <laughs> Come on, ref. They, they called the travel on Ifty, but that was nice right there. The young man being aggressive like he needs to be. The Diamond Store. Here's a look at the, uh, the 100, the band, the marching 100. And I asked you before the game, Coach, I would think if they're the marching 100 in football season, perhaps they're just the 100 here in basketball season because they're staying in place. I don't know. I, I, I know this. The 100 are must-see entertainment. No doubt. Whether they're marching or whether they're sitting in, 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 in this arena, they're must-see entertainment. With John Thompson III, I'm Doug Sherman here in Tallahassee, Florida, the home of the Rattlers. It's the Lawson Center, a building that uh, is among, if not the best, might be the best, in the MEAC. But they have been long star for a winner. It's been more than a decade since the Rattlers finished the season with a better than 500 record. They could get there this year. They're on pace. They're playing with that sense of purpose. Right there is an outstanding play by Davis. He didn't get the basket, but he sealed his man, which allowed the, penetrate, the penetrator to get all the way to the rim. And that was Randy Miller, Jr. And again, as we said earlier, Coach, he's not been shooting the basketball lately as he can, but he's been doing a better job getting to the basket. Reeves off the mark, long rebound to Ravenel. Nobody picks him up, but he puts it in. He can make two point pointers also. You see a nice adjustment, I think, by Coach Moten. He put Douglas, who's 6'8", maybe 6'9", on Ravino, just to get a little more height on him. More length to bother those shots. Got to give the big boy the ball right now. Here comes the double team. Gets the ball out of his hands. Douglas keeps it alive. Cross court back to the near side. Good defense by Justin Ravenel, but the possession continues, and the Eagles will head to the line. Jordan Perkins was fouled on the layup attempt. And right there, you see Central giving, giving a and a little bit of their own medicine. They're going to the offensive boards right there. So you throw the ball down to Davis. He's, he's, he's a good passer. He's not greedy. He absorbed the double team, made a nice cross-court pass, and then for the rest of the possession, a and was they're in scramble mode. They're chasing. And so what happens, you move it around, you end up with an or a contested layup, in a foul. Coach, do you know where you were on March 4th, 2006? March 4th, 2006. Uh, uh, preparing for a Big East tournament is what I'll say. Well, in general, yes. Specifically, though, you were in Tampa, Florida with your Georgetown Hoyas taking on the USF Bulls in a late season Big East Conference game. The head coach at USF at the time was Robert McCollum, who's the Rattlers head coach now. So you went head-to-head -head with him. Your Hoyas were ranked 20th in the country. His Bulls were trying to avoid a winless conference season. And what happened that night? Our guys decided that they wanted to skip that game and, and, and look forward to the Big East tournament. They beat us last game of the regular season down in the Sun Dome. Uh, last game of the regular season. I, I, see if you... Just the date didn't ring a bell with me. Once you started to talk, I knew exactly what you were talking about <laughs> uh, and exactly where I was. And you were just back in that building recently, right? Uh, last week for, or a couple days ago for an outstanding USF win over Memphis. Memphis was down big. Started off 27-1. to 1. Memphis was down and, and came all the way back. Young man Jeremiah Martin put on a show in the second half. 41 points. 41 points in a, in a collegiate half. Had about six or seven steals, mm. rebounds. Ran out of gas. We still got the good win, but it was, it was fun. When you walked back in the building, you had a little pit in your stomach, didn't you? Absolutely. Thinking about that, whatever that date was, you just rattled <laughs> off. <laughs> well, you and Coach McCollum matched uh, up as head coaches three times in your 
stints first at Princeton. He was at Western Michigan when you were at Princeton. You matched up once, and then that one season as Big East Conference rivals, you split. You both uh, won on your home floors. And that's a gentleman who's got a long and established career in coaching. He was an assistant at South Alabama. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, are you going to let everyone know the outcome of those other two games? You beat him at Georgetown, and you beat him when you were at Princeton. So you're 2-1 okay. and one against him. I'm sorry. Okay. I, didn't, I yeah, skipped we're just, right there. We're just going to go. Okay. Let's just clear that up. Thompson 2, McCullum 1. But uh, Coach McCullum, this is his third stop as a head coach. As mentioned, at Western Michigan for three years and then at USF for four years. But he uh, has had three tremendous stops under Lon Kruger, Kansas State, Florida, and then Illinois. So he has coached at the highest levels and brings something different that this Rattlers program has not had in a long time. In the last couple of years as an assistant at Oregon, as you said, he, he knows what it takes for this program to succeed. He's had a lot of experience in managing a program, not just coaching a game, managing a program. He worked for Dana Altman there, as you mentioned. Had a stop at Georgia Tech where he coached under Paul Hewitt. Also at UCF, University of San Francisco. A 64-year-old grandfather from Birmingham, Alabama. He's got his team off to its best conference start since 1990. And on top by double figures here against North Carolina Central. Four-game winning streak, 10-point lead. One of the best shooters in the conference. And you talk to him this afternoon, you think the sky's still falling. <laughs> well, he's a coach. Absolutely. Did you hate losses more than you enjoyed wins? There's, there's, I, I think most people say yes to that. You, you, in many ways, you don't remember the wins, but you remember the losses. You remember, you know, you, you rattled off that, that game we lost to them in South Florida last game of the regular season. I remember that very well. I remember going back to the, to the room after that. Mm -hmm. remember, we've had some great wins that I don't remember as well. You remember the losses more. They eat at you more. They last longer. I mean, are we following the well, A guy named Solomon Jones in that game put 23 on the Hoyas in what was the 63-56 final score, and I promise that's you the last really, time I'll... I was going to say, you really researched that game. Last time I'll bring it up, Coach. Second half, we'll go through some of your best wins. Reeves getting fancy. Okay, grandson. <laughs> okay, grandson. <laughs> Timeout, North Carolina Central. Well, the grandson, Cameron Reeves, having himself a nice game at the point for the Rattlers, who lead by 10. Saturday, we'll have the top three teams in the nation on ESPN. Number one, Tennessee, has won a school record 16 in a row. Volunteers will square off against Florida at 4 p.m. Eastern. Then, it's Zion, RJ, and number two, Duke, taking on number three, Virginia in a sonic blockbuster. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. With former Final Four head coach John Thompson III, I'm Doug Sherman. Final 18 seconds of the half. And you see, coming out of that timeout, Central did make an attempt to go in into Davis a couple of times. You see what they do this last possession. This is Jordan Perkins, sophomore out of Greensboro Country Day School in Greensboro, North Carolina. His runner is an air ball and lands on the baseline, and so the Rattlers will get it back with three seconds to play in the half. And I, I tell you what, you really have to give a lot of credit to the Rattlers' defense this half, Ho holding Central to 28 points so far with three seconds left. I mean, they've really discombobulated essential uh, 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 with everything that they're trying to accomplish. As much as we're talking about Ravino and his offense, it's been their defense that has, that has been stellar this first half. Well, Coach, the crossover is back for a sixth year tomorrow and Wednesday on ESPN, but this year we're pairing a college analyst with an NBA analyst for twice the basketball breakdowns. All four games are live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. So if you're the Rattlers here with three seconds to go, whose hands do you want the ball in, Coach? 
Well, you know, in three seconds, they're probably going to run some type of action to get, get someone with the ball on the run and just see if you can get someone to overcommit and snap it to Ravino in the, in the, in the corner. You know. A long baseball pass comes to the center. Martin gets it off to Ravino. And he banks it in! <laughs> Prime time. Why not? Why not end the half like that? If you're doing it the whole first half, just like Coach drew it up. No, to, 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 to make that note, Coach McCullough, great play right there, great execution. Ravino kicks it in. Coach, at the rate he's going, he might have the all-time program record for career threes tonight. He might. Big-time player, great pass. I knew it was in. I heard him call it. Blast, <laughs> baby. All right, our score at halftime, 41-28. Florida A&M on top. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, we'll take you to the college basketball studio. Welcome back to Big Monday. We're in Tallahassee, Florida, on the campus of Florida A&M University. And it's been all Rattlers on top 41 to 28. And welcome back, everybody. Doug Sherman along with six-time conference champion at Princeton and Georgetown head coach John Thompson III. We saw one heck of a performance out of Justin Ravenel shooting the three and playing a really perfect first 20 minutes. You know, close to perfect. It's really going to be interesting to see what Coach Moten does to combat that. You know, they're, he's, they're giving Ravino too much space on all ball screens. The man guarding Ravino is running into the screen, he has to fight over that harder. And the big has to step up just a little bit. But he's shown, you know, you know Coach McCullum talked about they're offensively challenged. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he found the answer. Just give the ball to this young man and get out of his way. Well, some of the pictures really are something. He was knocking down threes, doing other things, and it leads up to a buzzer-beating three right before halftime. He was hot from the start to the finish. Right from the start, right, right through the ending bell. Yes, and he's getting too much space. He's a shooter and a shooter in a shooter's groove. It's one of those things. You have to double him. You have to take the ball out of his hands. They have to make it harder for him to catch the ball. It's just been too easy. they got to make do something different. Or he's going to keep launching. And so, Coach, his 24 points is very nearly what the entire Eagles team has. He's just three games removed from his career-high 28 points, which came against Coppin State. And at this rate, that'll get blown out of the water. He's got a chance to catch Terrence Woods' single-game program record for made threes in a game, which is 12. Let's see what NC Central is able to do to combat that here in the second half. And if they don't, it's going to be lights out. If they don't, we're in for a fun half. <laughs> if, he, if he stays on this pace. No, but Coach Moat is too good, too good of a coach. He's going to do something different. Let's just see what it is. Now, Coach Moat's Eagles have the basketball first. Moving from our right to left. Perkins, Miller, and McKnight starting in the backcourt. And the bigs for the Eagles both performed pretty well in the first half in Davis and Douglas, but they really need more out of both and especially out of Douglas. Yeah, yeah, I, I think but more out of both. I mean, Davis and Douglas. Uh, uh, Douglas made some shots early, but, but then pretty much was non-existent. You know, and they have to make a more of a concerted effort, effort to get Davis the ball. And if that doesn't happen, both of these young men need to stop worrying about who's throwing me the ball. They need to go get it. They need more offensive rebounds, more possessions, where they're making the hustle plays, the effort plays, instead of waiting for the ball to come to them. I found it interesting in talking to Coach Moten earlier today and talking about Rashawn Davis. He says he's got to post and then repost and then repost again if he has to to keep working throughout the possession if he doesn't get the basketball the first time around. That is 100% true. But also the guards need to know that he's posting and reposting. They, the they need to look and then look again and then look the third time. Here goes Douglas. Tough shot. Deny. Isaiah Martin with a block shot. Here come the Rattlers. Tracy Hector with the basketball. Reeves. Grandson. <laughs> little nice little hezzy right there. Gets to the basket. You know, down the other end. You know, one adjustment that I think Central needs to make on penetration. The guy that has the ball is trying to score every time. He, and he's drawing a crowd. And he's running into too many bodies. 
penetrate to be a helper, penetrate to dump it off, penetrate to kick it out, because they haven't had success going getting to the rim, with the exception of the first two or three minutes of the game, and then the Rattlers made an adjustment on how they were defending. And on that last possession, Isaiah Martin, the seven-footer from Denver, came up with the block shot. Step back, Ravenel. And with the Eagles standing around, Tracy Hector gets his first field goal of the night. Off offensive rebound. You know, they come out of the first half. You, you can't give them those second shots. Miller, nice looking shot. Nice penetration right there. Nice seal, as he did a lot in the first half by Davis. I'm going to say it again. They need to get Davis the ball more. Side they go to Martin, who draw, draws a crowd and coughs up the basketball. Miller. He will shoot two. Way to attack off a turnover right there. Miller going right to the rim. Quick strike going right to the rim. Coach that fouls on big number 25 for Florida AM, DJ Jones. He's 6'9, 200 pounds. He's the younger brother of Golden State Warriors big man. Damian Jones, Damian though out for the season with a torn pectoral muscle, but uh, when DJ Jones transferred from Tulane to Florida A&M, Robert McCullum said he is our most talented player. He might not be our best player, not right now, but he's our most talented. And, and from watching him practice the last couple of days, uh, he is. There's not too much on the court that he can't do. You know, look, you look at that little, I mean, he's 100 pounds soaking wet. You know, clearly he needs to, to gain a little bit of weight. And, and, and just be more assertive as he continues to get more comfortable out there. But he can, you can put him at different spots on the court and he can have success. He didn't get much playing time his freshman year at Tulane. And he has two full years after this one at FAMU. He feeds the ball inside, picks up the assist on the bucket by Martin. You know, since Martin has come back onto the team, he was, he was academically ineligible for a while. It's really been a boost to the team. He's playing, starting to get more comfortable. His father, big-time player, played at St. Joe's and then played in the NBA for a couple of years with the, with the Nuggets. He is a long seven-footer who, as you mentioned, because of academics, only played the first half of last year. He grabs a rebound. And then the second half this year, he missed the spring semester of 2018 and then the fall semester as well. And yeah, he is a real big difference maker. And while he may not be a prolific scorer or stat sheet stuffer, he's active enough on both ends of the floor that he really helps FAMU. He does. He gives them that presence. I mean, he, that people are on penetration. They're worried about him a little bit. He has several blocks in this game. And pretty active going to the boards. Well, in his partial season a year ago, he blocked more than two shots per game. He's on that same pace this year. Hasn't played enough to qualify for the league leadership. Trying to set up Rabinal off of the baseline screens. He gives it up to Reeves. He's had a nice change of pace with the ball in his hands. He really has. And, and you know what I like right there is Rabinal, who's, as we've noted, is having an outstanding game. The unselfish kick right there. He's not, not trying to force a shot. Well, there's what you're talking about, Coach. The man who penetrates, Randy Miller with the ball in his hand, looking for his own shot, and on the reverse, he gets it blocked. Yeah, he's running into, into three people in that penetration. You get in there, come to a start. You see he's got three guys around him. Guys are open all over the court. They're not having success on penetrating, getting to the rim. You still need to keep penetrating, but get in there and for, to be a helper, not looking out for yourself. Nice idea, but Perkins couldn't find Davis on the post, and the pass goes out of bounds untouched. Now, now what I want to see right here is how Davis responds at this point in the game. He's frustrated. He hasn't gotten the touches that he wanted. Right there, he clearly had his man buried. The pass was a little off. Now, is he going to compete? Is he going to suck it up, or is he going to pout and complain? Great block right there. Maybe that answers my question. Now, Coach, I'm telling you, I don't know if you noticed that. But when you just said what you said, there was a lull in the crowd. He heard what you said about, let's see how Davis responds. He looked right at you and then went about blocking a shot. I'm not kidding. Well, let me, I'm going to start talking a little louder. 
and <laughs> see if he can get him to do something else. He heard the coach and went to business. This is Ravenel who scored 24 first half points. Reeves crossing over the defender. Boy, he can get himself a mid-range shot pretty much whenever he wants. Today. <laughs> Today, he's been outstanding. You know, if he brings, we said earlier, Ravenel needs some help. He needs someone to help him out. And if Reeves can play like he's played so far, if Jones can continue to progress, Coach McCullum's team is in a pretty good condition coming down the stretch here. Long rebound by Martin. And Reeves has 12 points tonight, came in averaging 7.6. Nice job to save the ball back to Reeves. Five minutes into the second half. And yet another flush by Isaiah Martin. And another outstanding play by Reeves right there. Nice read, nice dish right there. Mixed up on defense. The big fella, Martin, ends up wide open under. The Rattlers are rolling. Be just okay. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. Now with 5G. We are back in the Lawson Center in Tallahassee, Florida. And the Rattlers of Florida A&M University with their largest lead of the night, 51-34. And while in the first half, the story was all Justin Ravenel. It has been his teammates so far here in the second half, taking the baton and running with it, Coach. No, and that's what Coach McCullum wants to see, that balance. We know it. He knows Ravenel can do that. Nice looking set coming out of the break to find Blunt for the easy layup. No, and I like that. On that time, you saw the penetration. But on his penetration, he was looking for a teammate. On the penetration, he draws a crowd around him. All of a sudden, Blunt ends up with, a, with an uncontested layup. That penetrate to help your teammate. That's what's open today. May not be open the next game, but that's what's open today. And you know what, Coach? You and I thought that Ravenel had 21 points at halftime, and now the latest stat sheet looks like they've taken one of those threes they credited to him in the first half and given it to somebody else. So we'll get to the bottom of that. At the moment, the stats say Ravenel has 21 points. All of those coming in the first half. Well, early on, when we thought he had three, they had him credited for four. I think we might have been correct. We'll get that sorted out with timeout on the floor. 51-36, the Rattlers up 15. Online. See how you can save more than $1,000 in the first year with Sprint. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Do the do. And if there are any family members back in Champaign, Illinois, who have been keeping real close track of Cameron Reeves' points, we want to make sure that he gets the three-pointer that the official score gave originally to Justin Ravenel. So we got our scorekeeping straight during that break. Ravenel's got 21 points. Give Reeves 15. And the grandson of the head coach continues to have a really nice game for the Rattlers. No, and if, if they continue with this balance, which Coach McCullum was said they needed. I mean, they, they don't look offensively challenged today. No. You know, because in addition to Ravino, who put on the show for us in the first half, you're seeing that they do have other guys that can step up. And if they get this balance, uh, you know, along with, with their defense, their defense has been outstanding lately. It's been outstanding today. They're, they're, they're going to keep progressing towards success, towards, you know, the one of the best seasons they've had in recent memory. Now, finishing better than 500 for the first time in a decade is a possibility for FAMU. They are 9-14 and 14 overall, 6-2 and two in league play so far. That's their best start in the MEAC since 1990. Davis creates some space and hits the shot. Got to go to them. They've, they've made, they've run plays to get Davis the ball. But now... 
as you said, Coach Coach Moten said Davis needs to post and post again and post a third time. The, the feeders, the passers need to keep looking for him. The ball winds up out of bounds, and it goes back to the Eagles. Turnover by Bryce Moraine, sophomore from Hillsboro High School in Tampa. And he'll take a seat on the bench, be replaced on the floor by Cameron Reeves. And we're still waiting to see how this, this, or at least I'm still waiting to see how this central team responds. I mean, you don't win two championships in a row, three of the last five. They have that championship pedigree. They've been in situations like this before. Now, how is this group going to respond? Coach Moten has uh, tried repeatedly this year to uh, instill in his team that, yes, you won four games in four days last year in the MEAC tournament to go to the NCAAs. Fennell with a follow dunk. But the reality was, last year's regular season was an inconsistent disappointment for North Carolina Central. And you can't just assume that come postseason, you're going to rattle off three or four wins in a row. Reeves now with 17 points. Great stick there by Reeves. Missed the shot early, stayed with it, goes to the cup. It's another one of those rebounds that the big fella needs to come up with. Big fella meaning Davis. That bounce pass split two teammates. Neither of them went for it. And that leaves the point guard, Julian Walter, saying, what happened, guys? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it, we still got 12-17 left in the game. You're down 13. There's plenty of time. There's plenty of time. You know, but so this, it's not time to come, become unraveled. But how are you going to respond right now? Fam, you, their execution has been terrific this entire game. Mezarike battling on the low post with Davis, begging for the basketball. His teammates won't give it to him. Instead, it's another pull-up. Long two for Reeves. I, I, I like if he's aggression right there. You know, if nothing else, he's he's occupying Davis, so Davis can't help anywhere else. I don't. I think that his teammates made the right decision, to tell you the truth, not to throw it to him. Okay. But his aggressiveness occupied bodies defensively. He's driving into three people. He, he can't get to stop doing that. And even though it didn't result in a basket at the other end, if he held his ground and forced that tough shot that allowed FAMU to get out and run. Timeout with 11.19 on the clock. The Rattlers on top by 15. The future only happens with people who really know how to deliver it. You know, with, with 11-19, this right here is what I'm talking about. On the penetration right there, freeze it. He's got four, or three men around him, maybe four. You're, they, they're having no success on that kind of penetration. Get in there, come to a jump stop, and at least two of your teammates are open. Wide open for the three was Walters. Going to stay at this end for North Carolina Central. And you see a little change up right there by Coach McCollum coming out of that timeout. He goes to his own, which we haven't seen so far this half. Well, there was a passing lane that closed up real quickly. Passing lane that wasn't there, quite frankly. So it was a mirage, it looked like. It was a mirage. They baited him into it. I anticipate Ravenel taking a shot sometime soon just to see if he remembers how to do it. <laughs> I'm guessing he does. Here he comes off the screen of the baseline. Instead, the ball comes to the other side. One to shoot, and a foul is called. Boy, that is a tough one for Reggie Gardner, Jr. That's how we describe it as a tough one. Well, how would you describe it? Bad call. You know, he flopped, just threw his head back. The defender was moving his feet. I don't, I don't think that was a foul right there. Bailed him out. 
Let's see. Does he know how to do it? Does he still know? Okay. That was a little James Harden right okay. there. Okay. You knew it was coming soon. It's like, okay, I just need, need to, things are going smoothly. But let me just see if let me just see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> Muscle memory is good for Justin Ravenel tonight. Is. 23 points to lead all scorers. This zone is slowed Central down. It's still man or zone. They need to go to the big fella. Oh, there you go. Davis with great space, able to lay it in. He's got a dozen. And you see the penetration for the pass that time. You end up with a layup. Big screen. DJ Jones stood his ground, and Walters paid the price. He's back up. Core drive and dish. And the length of D.J. Jones to be able to lay it in. Nice patience by Core right there. He kind of playing around with the ball for most of that shot clock. But then he penetrated the pass. Central hasn't found a rhythm against his zone yet. Dribbled out of bounds. It's a Gardner turnover. See, Core has the ball. The crowd kind of like that. He gets in there. Drops it off to Jones. You know, Jones, between his transfer year, I mean, he hasn't, in the year, he, he didn't play that much at Tulane. You know, and then he's transferred and sat out. He hasn't played that much in two years. As he continues, you know, not only it's easy to talk about his body, his body, he'll fill out, he'll get that. But as he continues to get more, more on-court minutes, he's going to be, he's going to be very, very good for this team in the future. Isaiah Martin hands it off. Core getting some oohs and ahs from the crowd. And then he gets his pocket pick, got it back, throws it to the rim. But the assist does not get registered because Martin missed. Wide open. And that's good offense right there. You know, one, they don't quit on the play down the other, and you're right, they got the oohs and ahs, then they come up with the steal. But down this end, you see the penetration, the kick out. You make one, two extra passes, you end up with a wide open shot. Doesn't go in, doesn't go in. But then that, if, if, if Central's going to get back in this game the last 845, they're going to have to get some second shots. Right now, they're going to have to start to extend extend their defensive pressure as they did the latter part of, of the first half. Penetrate, kick, extra pass, end up with a wide open shot. You miss it, effort plays, we end up at the foul line. That's what they're going to have to do. It's, it's, it's un unlike years past, possibly, with FAMU, they're not going to give this game away. Central's going to have to go work, work their way back into this game. Jones connects. Long two-point shot. He's a good one, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be a good one. Eight minutes remaining in regulation. This has been all fam you. Pretty much from an extended run midway through the first half. The Eagles still fighting. No, oh, there you go. I mean, that, that's how they're going to do it. Second time, two possessions in a row, they get a second shot. It's the only way it's going to happen. No, you know. Lavelle Moten, in his 10th year as head coach at his alma mater, is one of the most accomplished coaches in program history at North Carolina Central. But John Thompson, he's got a long way to go to catch up with number one in the history of Eagles coaching. You say a long way to go respectfully, and I love Coach Moten. I don't know whether he's ever going to catch Coach McClendon. You know, and we're talking about John McClendon, who is the godfather mm -hmm. of black coaches. I mean, they're in, in, in the house, in our house growing up, my dad had a statue 
of, of Coach McClendon uh, uh, on, on his desk in his office. You know, he's someone that's been an inspiration. My dad, throughout his entire coaching career, sat in the middle of the bench. And he did that because Coach McClendon did that. Mm. Um, and, and he did it. And, and the theme behind that was there is no end of the bench. The coach sits in the middle. And Coach McClendon did that. My dad did that because he learned that from Coach McClendon, someone who, is, as you said, is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and, and as I said, is, is the godfather for black coaches. Again, John McClendon. At the time, the school was called the North Carolina College for Negroes. He was head coach at now NC Central from 1941 to 52. Then he went to Hampton Institute for a couple of years. And then another one of his noteworthy accomplishments, back in 1967, he went to Cleveland State and became the first black man to be a head coach at a traditionally white school. So for many reasons, he is forever honored in the Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts. One of two Hall of Famers to come out of NC Central. The other, Sam Jones, who won 10 NBA championships as a member of the Boston Celtics. I think that's fascinating, the, the fact that your father went to those lengths to learn from Coach McClendon, whose name, by the way, is on the building that the Eagles play in back in Durham. Well, he, Coach McClendon, it was not just a question of him being a free, he was a great coach. You know, one of the first, really, to start the pressure defense, pushing the ball, trapping, you know, that a lot of people now emulate. He was one of the first if not the first black coaches to coach professionally, and I'm not 100% positive about that, but a huge influence on my dad and all of us black coaches. Count the basket for DJ Jones. And just to, to tell you more about how forward thinking coach John McClendon was he was the head coach at North Carolina Central for what is forever known as the secret game on the morning of Sunday March 12 1944 during World War II a Duke basketball team snuck across town to play an illegal racially integrated basketball game North Carolina Central beat Duke that day 88 44 and again what's called the secret game and, and if you ever are on the campus of North Carolina Central you kind of can feel it. The building where the game was played no longer exists, but you can feel that history there. And that's a team photograph from that year. No photographs were taken of the game. It was truly a secret game. Through word of mouth, did its legend carry on? And again, the legend of Coach John McClendon carries on in the city of Durham. In the city of Durham and many other cities, his legend lives on. And people aspire to accomplish this one iota of the success that he had as, had as a coach. Coach Moten certainly knows the legend of his predecessor. He's a 44-year-old Boston native. He grew up in Boston uh, loving the Red Sox, loved the Celtics, but he didn't love the Patriots. So he wasn't uh, real thrilled with yesterday's Super Bowl outcome, but the reason LaBelle Moton didn't like and doesn't like the Patriots, he went to a game in Foxborough as a kid where the Steelers were in town playing the Patriots. He and his friends tried to talk to Patriots players who apparently were at best dismissive. At the same time, Steelers players were very nice to a young Lavelle Moton. Therefore, he's a Steelers fan. A passionate Steelers fan. One who is very close with the Steelers head coach, Mike Tomlin. Goes to training camp every summer, spends a week with the Steelers, sits in on meetings. And you can learn coaching lessons across sports, right, John? Well, coaching is leadership and, it's, and teaching. So without a doubt, you, you can learn coaching lessons across sports. I mean, I think that possibly the best coach in America right now, any sport, any sport is Bill Tierney, the lacrosse coach at Denver. Mm -hmm. Outstanding coach. And, and, and he was a lacrosse coach at Princeton part of the time I was there. And I was sitting on 
his practices and learn from him. And so it's, it's leadership, it's motivation. You know, a lot of people can draw up the X's and O's on this is what you do, this is what you should do. But, but getting that message and getting your team to believe in it, getting them to execute it is what coaching is all about. And Coach Tierney, for those who don't know, went out to Denver in a place that there was no lacrosse. Basically, that part of the country didn't play lacrosse, and he's turned them into a national power. Without a doubt. And, and in his own way, Coach Moten is doing the same thing essentially. They're struggling tonight. You know, but this is someone, I said earlier, is one of the best coaches in the country. They've won their conference two years in a row, three of the last five. You know, unfortunately, a lot of coaches at the HBCUs are looked at differently, though. And you look at, you know, down through the years, and, and this list might not be complete, but I would come up with six coaches that have left H, the, you know, the SWAC, the EAC, the CIAA, and got a chance to move up. Steve Merrifield went from Hampton to Evansville. Anthony Evans went from Norfolk State to FIU. James Green, Mississippi Valley State to Jacksonville State. Sean Woods, Southern to Moorhead State. Mike Davis, mm -hmm. who was at Indiana and is a Texas Southern, is now at Detroit. And then you go back to Coach Cheney, John Cheney, from Cheney State to Temple. These guys, those are the guys that got the opportunity. We're going back to 1982. Mm -hmm. Only five, six people have had that opportunity. And I say it again. Coach Moten is an outstanding coach as, as this season wind down, winds down. And he loves where he is. He's at his alma mater. He's home, so to speak. But his name needs to be mentioned as some of these jobs open up. He should get the same opportunity as others because he is an elite coach, elite program builder. Very well said, John. by Julian Walters. Still down 16. Eagles trying to turn the Rattlers over. Nice looking mid-range shot by MJ Randolph. He, by the way, is out of Booker T. Washington High School in Pensacola, Florida. That's the same high school that produced who we talked about in the first half. Former Rattler great Bob Williams, who went on to become the first black player in Lakers history back in 55 when the franchise was still in Minneapolis. And Mr. Mark adds another block. Nothing's going to be easy on teams playing against these Rattlers in the next few years. You know, we've talked a lot about rap now, but these young kids, penetration right there, Mr. Martin comes over. Not today, baby. I, w I would love to see the little Matambo finger wag right there. <laughs> of course you would. I'd love to see that right there. <laughs> but he's protecting that rim. As we said before, he averages better than two blocks per game, and he's made a difference changing blocking shots in this ball game tonight. And he's just getting settled. I mean, he's he's just, he said, on, on, on didn't play last spring, didn't play this fall. Yeah, he didn't return to the Rattlers lineup until December 21st at Portland and didn't get back into the starting lineup until January 19th against Maryland Eastern Shore, so you're right. Well, before tonight, Cameron Reeves season high was 20 points in a game against Memphis. And he has matched that here tonight. Reeves with a turnover, try to no look. Yeah, he's he's having to he's relaxed a little bit. Everything's going well. Don't force it. Catch and shoot McKnight. Good box out by Tracy Hector Jr. And now no hurry for Cameron Reeves. No, no hurry down this end. They're going to run through their sets. They're going to execute. They've been executing all night. And they're playing that zone down the other end where, where Central is having trouble finding a rhythm. Under four minutes on the clock. Now down to six on the shot clock. Ravenel has it poked away. Off the steal, Walters is denied. The block by Reeves. Ravenel for three. That would have just been too much for this crowd to handle if Ravenel was banged out. Miller. Good fight for the basketball. But Blunt was the last to touch it. 
Well, the Rattlers used a 20 to 6 run to secure the lead in the first half. Both halves, they're doing it by defense. The chase down blocked by Cam Reeves. Let's get to work. Big Monday will continue, and HBCU action will continue. You get a chance to see Grambling State's Ivy Smith Jr., the leader in assists per game. In the SWAC, Grambling will be taking on Mississippi Valley State. The Delta Devils trying to pull the upset coming up next on ESPNU. With John Thompson III, I'm Doug Sherman. Glad to be here in the MEAC in Tallahassee, Florida, where the home team has been really good right from the start. The Rattlers on top by 20. They've been outstanding. And you just see this team getting better as the year goes on. As, as you know, we talked about with Martin being back, they're getting their pieces back together. This eight games left is going to be interesting for, in, this, in the MEAC. And then so is the tournament. Well, the tournament's going to be back in Norfolk this year. North Carolina Central came in as a big underdog a year ago and wound up heading back to Durham with the nets in hand. And they're just, they're just burning clock now. Randolph has to pull it back out. Reeves. Everything's working for him in the second half. Everything. Grandson. <laughs> That's uh, 23 points a new season high. So Ravenel had 21 of his 25 points in the first half. And Reeves is just taking over in the second half. That's a good sign, though. The balance, the balance, is 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 what coach has been looking for. It's been all Ravenel's been producing all year, but as the years progress, you see some other guys slowly but surely settling into finding out how they can how they can get there, how they can complement, how they can assist them. Their defense has been there. I mean, their defense has been there. The, the the last game coming out of the gate. You know, they have a 63 to 39 win. Over over A and T over North Carolina A and T, you know NC Central only has 54 points right now. The defense has been there. If they can get that offensive production to complement it. Look out! And NC Central has missed 18 of its 19 three-point shots tonight. Only one for 19, five percent. Not going to win many games shooting that percentage. No, but. They, 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 which is part of the reason why I stressed over and over again they need to go inside to the big fella. Mm -hmm. You know, the last game, they were one for 24 from three. Two games before that, when they played a and North Carolina A&T, they were three for 22. Tonight so far, you just said they are one for 19. So, okay, th that's, that's pretty bad. All right, there's no, no other way to put it. That's pretty bad. So let's do something else. Let's let's go in. Let's, and, and as the year goes on, coach will figure that out. The team will figure that out. Coach probably already has figured it out. The team hasn't figured it out yet. You know, there's no need to keep chucking those shots up there with the lack of success that you're having. Trying to go to work. A little step back jump shot, no. Quickly the other way, Blunt missed the reverse layup. It's one of those days. It's one of those days. Coach McCullough calls a timeout just to get a sub in, just to get guys out of the game, to get Revenel out of the game. Sit down, young fella. Well, 
Well, as we mentioned, Florida A&M in the preseason poll was picked seventh in the MEAC, but uh, tonight and throughout the last five, six weeks, Coach McCollum's club has shown that it's going to be better than that. On the verge of improving to seven and two, keeping pace with Norfolk State and North Carolina A&T. NC Central will drop to five and four and back into a tie with Coppin State. It's got a lot of ball to be played left in this season. And this team, you, you know, it, it may be too early to start talking about peaking, but they're playing extremely well right now. And trust me, NC Central, led by Coach Moulton, will live to fight again. They'll be back. It's one of those days. Oh, there's no doubt. Three times they've been to the NCAA tournament in the last decade under Coach Moten. 2014, 2017, 2018, the MEAC Coach of the Year in 2017 when they went 25-9. and nine And included in those 25 wins, they went to Columbia, Missouri and beat the Tigers. This is a uh, NC Central program on firm bedrock no doubt about that tough night tonight but they will live to fight again and down the other end this is the second year another veteran coach coach McCollum two outstanding coaches here I, mean, I can't say that enough two outstanding coaches program program builders not team makers program builders I would think it's especially tough for Coach Moten, who as a Hall of Fame player at NC Central made 40% of his three-point shots, to see his team not make shots anywhere near that rate for him. Can't shoot it for him. Just try to coach him up. And like you said, they'll have better days. And he'll figure out. I don't, I don't think he aspires to have his team be him or do what he can do. And he's shown down through the years that he knows what adjustments to make and how to make them to get what's best out of each individual. That's the key with coaching is like, how can I get the best out of this group? What, what should we do to help this group win? And as you said, last year they didn't peak until the tournament, until the, you know, literally the week of the tournament. So they got time. Walters makes the layup, and now the Rattlers can just run out the clock. The winning streak is now five for Florida A&M. Great game. See if they can keep it going. We'll be back next week. We will. Next Monday, we'll be back here in Tallahassee to see the Rattlers one more time. Our final tonight, 73-57. FAMU with the win. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's Mississippi Valley State versus Grambling State. Let's send it out to Dave Lamont and Corey Alexander for the call.